Hey guys, it is Tyler here, back once again with another Assassin's Creed Top 5 video. Sorry, it's been so long since the last one. But, you know, things happen. All the movie trailers came out, did those videos, so that got in the way. But now we're here, back with more Top 5s, continuing this series. Starting again now, going back to Assassin's Creed 1 after the Ezio Trilogy. After this, we're going to head to Assassin's Creed 3 and go in the chronological order of the games that released. So without further ado, let's get right into this top 5 moments in Assassin's Creed 1. The first moment I'd like to talk about is Malik forgiving Altair. That's my number 5 moment. So this is an interesting moment because it's a lot of character development and it's what makes Malik such an interesting character. Sure, he's just one of the bureau members that you talk to to get your assassination contracts, and pretty much the whole game he calls you a fucking asshole, which is a fair point. I mean, you're the reason his brother died, you're the reason he lost his arm, and he's behind a desk and not assassinating people doing the fun stuff. You're pretty much his worst enemy, and you think of him as your arch enemy, and so many people that are supposed to be your friends as your allies. I do not accept your apology. I understand. No, you don't. I do not accept your apology because you are not the same man who went with me into Solomon's temple. And so you have nothing to apologize for. The interesting thing I love about Malik is he's a reasonable guy and he helps you develop into a better person. And he also, funny enough, ends up being one of your greatest allies with all these other people you think are your allies being your enemies like Al Malim. So having this moment where Malik forgives everything you've done after you're the reason his brother had died and all that sort of stuff was such a great moment and a really nice character development moment that I'll tell you when to apologize and Malik goes you have nothing to apologize for it's just a great moment at number four it is the opening of the game in Solomon's temple it started off Assassin's Creed in such an interesting way and it showed a lot of things that make Assassin's Creed what it is which is the history the mystery and all that sort of that Ryan done intentionally and it was so great you see this historical thing and they play with the history and things we'd love to see with the discovered underground Solomon's Temple and you have the Ark of the Covenant in here and you're like, oh wow, this is really interesting and you have the Knights Templar there and you have these hooded assassins who are the arch enemies. It sets up straight away the sort of battle that goes on that here's the good guys here, here's the bad guys or at least here's the assassins, here's the Templars and here's what they fight over, these secret treasures and it just brought up this awesome mystery and played with all the history and stuff like that. Again, another fucking run. Unintentional, guys, I swear to God. And obviously it sets up the character Altair so well with the type of personality he is and how he actually needs to change and all the things that happened with Malik, of course, and his brother, and again, sets up one of your enemies, Robert de Sable, for later in the game. At number three is actually your battle with Robert de Sable, the guy you think is the Grand Master of the Templar Order, or at least the guy you think is your arch enemy after all this. After killing all these targets, you finally head to this big battle. So you have Robert de Sable who's trying to convince King Richard to ally his armies with Salah ad the opposing army during the Crusader Wars. And that would lead them to all connecting and fighting against the Assassins for all the havoc you've wrought on the Holy Land. So this is a huge moment where it's like a Game of Thrones trial by combat sort of thing where Altair has to fight all these Crusaders, win, and if he proves himself in the eyes of God, then his accusation against Robert is just. So you have this awesome battle and you're like, oh fuck, you have this army of Templars you fight against and end up fighting and battling Robert himself, taking him down and then King Richard allows you pretty much to spare the assassins overall. But that's where you also discover your huge secret that Al Mualim, your mentor, has been deceiving you this whole time. And you gotta go fuck him up now too. So a crazy, awesome, fun moment in the game. At number two, it is when Altair meets Maria. This is when you see Robert, or at least you think it's Robert at this funeral of one of your previous targets last time you're in Jerusalem and you have this huge battle thinking yeah this is it this is kind of the end of the game or close to it and then you keep kind of hearing the voice and you're like this isn't Robert and you find out it is a woman Maria Thorpe and you're just like what the f Alto's like what the fuck's going on what's up 
what what is this and you find out all these secrets and she's just like this is what Robert's plan is to unite the Crusaders and Salah Hadin's army so you're like oh shit gotta go stop Robert and what he's doing because for some reason she just reveals all her plans and tells you where they are and how to stop them and all that sort of shit so that was really interesting but you also see Altair spare his first target clearly sexist and hates men that's why he did that obviously and uh, you could just say with these two because it's Altair's future wife Maria could have say it's love at first fight <laughs> I'm sorry at number one it is Altair versus Al Mualim this epic battle that built up this very manipulative man and mentor that is Al Mualim who throughout all the game you have these kind of eyebrow raising moments these questions is he telling you the full truth what's up with these Templars he's not telling us why we're doing what we're doing fully you know he's holding back and you find out it's because he's manipulating you this whole time you find out all the times he tried to properly control you with the Apple of Eden. You see the pieces of Eden's powers. You go through all these awesome phases as a boss battle. And in Assassin's Creed 1's combat, it was kind of difficult, made way more challenging and entertaining. You fought replicas of all of your previous targets. Then you fight an army of al Mualims until you get the right one. And then you finally battle al Mualim again. It's just this awesome end battle with different stages, one of the better ones of all the Assassin's Creed games, it shows you the mysteries of these pieces of Eden, there's more to it, and as well, Altair kind of has his moment where he's not only brought back as a great assassin and a good person, but he could in fact now have to lead the assassins, and in fact he does end up leading the assassins after the events of this battle with Al Mualim. So it was a very awesome moment in the game. That's why it is number one, obviously. So guys, that's my top five moments in Assassin's Creed 1. Obviously, all my opinion and very biased. So let me know what you think. Did I miss any moments you thought should have been in this top five? Let me know your top five moments in the comments. And of course, I'd love to hear your thoughts on Assassin's Creed 1 and all these moments. Do you think it was suitable? And that's about it. We'll be back very soon with top five moments in Assassin's Creed 3. That should be fucking great. And I'll see you guys later.